All right, so to get started here, the first thing that we're gonna take a look at is how to create and run a Nest.js project. Now, before we get started, the first thing that I wanna point out is that unlike other backend libraries that are used for creating web servers such as Express or Happy.js, when you're working with Nest.js, you're usually going to use a boilerplate generator to set up your project for you. Now, in order to do this, we're gonna to need to install something called Nest CLI, which is just a command line tool that will allow us to create new projects and manage those projects as you'll see. So the point here is that unlike an Express, let's say, where you get started just by creating an empty folder, installing the Express package into that folder and uh, creating a file and starting your code from scratch, with Nest, you're actually going to generate a project and work with code that's been automatically generated for you. All right, so first things first, let's install this Nest CLI tool into our computer. And in order to do that, what you're gonna wanna do is open up a terminal. And uh, first thing I guess you're actually gonna wanna do is make sure you have at least fairly up-to-date versions of Node and NPM installed on your computer. Uh, so you can check those by running the commands node-v, that'll show you your current Node.js version. And if you run npm-v, that will show you your current version of NPM. And they don't have to be exactly the versions that I have here, but you just don't wanna be running Node 7 or something like that because chances are a lot of the commands that I'm gonna show you here won't work. So. Just make sure you have an up-to-date version of Node installed. You can do that just by going to Node.js's website and downloading the latest version that they have on there. So anyway, assuming that you've checked the versions of Node and NPM, you are free to proceed. And the next thing that we're gonna do, as I said, is install the Nest.js CLI. And the way that we do that is by running the command npm install dash g. And then we're gonna say at nest js slash CLI, okay? So that will install the Nest CLI tools into our computer locally so that we can run them in our terminal no matter what folder we're in, okay? So now that we've done that, the next thing that we're gonna do is generate a project using the command line tools that we just installed. So I'm currently in a folder called Nest.js course. This is just a folder that I'm using to hold all of my Nest.js projects for this course. So um, what we're gonna do is generate our projects inside of this folder. And you can create your own folder for this purpose. It doesn't really matter where you create these projects. You could just create them in documents or repos if you want. But in order to create our first Nest.js project, we're going to run the command nest new, okay, so this is the uh, command that will generate a new project for us. And then after that, we're going to put the name of our project. So I'm just gonna say something like my first project and hit enter. And what that's gonna do is create a bunch of files and then it's going to ask us which package manager we wanna use. If you're used to another package manager such as Yarn, you can feel free to use that, but I'm just gonna use NPM, so I'll hit enter here. And what that's going to do now is install all of the dependencies that our project needs, right? So it's installing things like the Nest.js core package as well as other packages that Nest.js uses behind the scenes. So uh, let's just wait for that to finish. And once it's done, we're going to open up that folder that was just created for us. And you can actually see this by listing out the contents of this directory. And you'll see that there's a new directory called my first project in there. If we open up that project, let's just open that here and click open. What you're gonna see is that there's been quite a bit of code that was generated for us, right? That was the purpose of running that nest new command that we just ran. So this is all the boilerplate code for our project, all right? And you'll see things in there like package.json that keeps track of things like our project's dependencies, et cetera. Uh, then you'll also have things that are a little bit more specific to the Nest framework, such as this nestcli.json. This just contains specific settings for running the Nest CLI inside this project. And then you'll also see things like eslintrc. This is for lint rules. And if you haven't worked with ESLint before, ESLint is basically a tool that helps us catch errors in our JavaScript code before we run the code. And it also helps us catch stylistic code errors, etc. cetera. So uh, anyway, if you wanna make any changes to this, you can feel free to do so. But 
One more thing that you'll see out here is this tsconfig.json file. And this is the configuration for TypeScript in this project. And yes, Nest.js projects do use TypeScript by default. However, you don't really need to know a whole lot of TypeScript in order to work with Nest.js because the way that TypeScript was designed, you can actually just write pure JavaScript and it will still count as TypeScript. So don't worry too much about this if you haven't worked with TypeScript before. I'm sure you'll find that the TypeScript related pieces of code that we'll be typing out are pretty easy to get a hang of. All right, so anyway, we've seen that out here we have all of the uh, setup files, etc., for our project. And then we have these two folders here, source and test. And we also have node modules here that just contains all of the code for our project's dependencies. We won't be working with that at all. And test, I guess I'll just go through that one first since we won't really be working with the test folder very much. Test just contains the end-to-end -end tests for our uh, Nest.js project, right? All right, so these are the top-level tests that test our entire server that we create. And again, we won't be working with that too much here. That's really an entire topic in itself, writing end-to-end -end tests for Nest.js servers. All right, so anyway, going into the source folder, the source folder contains the bulk of our application-specific code. Right? All right, so this is gonna be the code that's really unique to whatever application we're creating. And what you'll see is that there's already a few files in here. There's this main.ts file, and this is the entry point for our application. Basically, this is the code that takes care of starting up our server and listening on a given port. We'll talk about that in more detail later. And then you're gonna see that there are four other files, all of which start with app dot. Okay, so we have app.controller.spec.ts, app.controller.ts, app.module.ts, and app.service.ts. Now, each of these file names might seem a little bit repetitive and a little bit confusing, but this is actually going to be a very helpful convention when we start creating larger Nest.js applications. So if you take a look at the names that we have here, the first part of the name refers to the specific feature, if you will, that this file belongs to, right? So these default files are the app related files, which basically refers to our entire application. But as we start working on smaller features, on smaller parts of our application, we'll create files that have names like users.service.ts and products.service.ts, blah, blah, blah. And each of these is going to contain code that helps implement a given part or feature or resource or whatever on our server. So that's the first part of these names that we're looking at here. The second part of the name tells us what the main concerns of the code in the file are. All right, so you'll see that there are really three different values here in this uh, middle part of the name. We have controller, we have module, and we have service. And these are specific Nest.js concepts that help us determine what code should be in which files. That might sound a little bit confusing. We'll go into much more detail on that later. But for now, all you need to know is that we have controllers, modules, and services, and each of those is going to have unique responsibilities in a Nest.js application. Okay, and obviously the last part of the file name is pretty straightforward. It's just TS, right? It's signifying that we're writing TypeScript in these files. So anyway, now that we've gone through those main files, let's see how we can run a Nest.js application. And the nice part about using a boilerplate generator like we just did is that we'll be able to run our Nest.js application without actually writing any code ourselves. So the way that we can run a Nest.js application is by using the command npm run start. And if we hit enter, and then we'll see all of this output here telling us that the server is running. And if we wanna send a request to this server, there are a few ways we can do that. Probably the easiest way is just to open up a new shell. And if you do this, you do have to leave the server running in the other window here. And you can run CURL localhost colon 3000. And if you hit enter, you're gonna see that it says hello world, okay? So basically what we've done with this command is sent a GET request to our server, which is running on localhost 3000, right? That means our server is listening on port 3000. And in case you're wondering where that was specified, that's in main.ts. That's this little 3000 that's passed to app.listen. So if you wanted your server to listen on a different port, you could just change that to something like 3001. And uh, if we were to restart our server here, of course, in order for that to uh, take effect, 
we could see that that would now have our server listen on port 3001, meaning that we would have to send our request, obviously, to localhost 3001. So if we hit enter, we'll see that that'll return hello world. And if we try sending it to localhost 3000, nothing will happen, right? We'll get an error saying failed to connect because our server is no longer listening there. But generally we'll want this to be port 3000 unless we have a good reason to change it, right? And a good reason might be if you're developing this alongside a React app because React apps in development generally run on port 3000 as well. All right, so anyway, that's one way to send a request to your server. And I'm just gonna restart this so that it'll be on port 3000 instead of 3001. And by the way, if it bothers you that you have to manually restart your server every time you make a change, then you'll be happy to know that there's actually a way to make this happen automatically. And that is just by adding colon dev onto the end of this script, right? So by saying npm run start colon dev, that will run it in development mode, which means that it will automatically watch our files and restart our server for us as we make those changes. All right, so anyway, we've seen how to test this server using the CURL command line tool. You can also test this out by simply opening up a browser, and I'm just gonna drag mine over here, there we go. And if we enter localhost 3000 up at the top and hit enter, we'll see that we get that same response back here as we did in the terminal. All right, so anyway, those are the basics of creating and running a Nest.js application. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.